The Book of Proverbs, Chapter 26 Proverbs 26 verses 1 to 28 As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. As a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. Sayest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. The slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom, it grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out, so where there is no tail-bearer, the strife saith. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a tail-bearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. He that hateth dissembleth with his lips, and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A lying tongue hateth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Opening Sentence Proverbs 26 verse 1 is snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemly for a fool. Finding the theme, what is seemly? Seemly is defined as what is suitable, what is becoming, and what is fit to the occasion or purpose at hand. Seemly is defined as what is suitable, what is becoming, and what is fit to the occasion or purpose at hand. Proverbs chapter 26 highlights what is fit or unfit in different occasions and purposes. This includes the administration of suitable rewards and punishments. Frequent usage of the words like and as are comparisons commonly found throughout section 3 of Proverbs. Snow in the summer is not something that anyone expects, as it is unfit for the season. Rain during the harvest is unwelcomed and even dangerous. In comparison, no one expects a fool to be honored. If he is, the results are often disastrous. A suitable curse. Proverbs 26 verse 2 As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. A bird wanders from its place to find food and a home of its own. A curse does not come without a reason, particularly for the nation of Israel. God had promised to bless his nation if they would obey his law. However, if they did not obey, he would send a curse. Read Leviticus 26 and Deuteronomy 28. It is fitting for God to bless and curse according to his word. Suitable Motivation Proverbs 26 verse 3 A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. A whip motivates a horse to move or to move faster. A bridle is used to pull, by force, the ass to do the will of the owner or to guide it towards the desired direction. A rod applied to the back of a fool is an appropriate punishment and motivation for the fool to do the will of God in the future. All these tools are fit for stubborn and rebellious creatures. A suitable answer. Proverbs 26 verses 4 to 5 answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. 
Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. At first glance, these verses appear to contradict one another until considered in light of the theme of what is seemly or most suitable. A wise son must discern the proper response to a fool, depending on the situation. Unsuitable messenger. Proverbs 26 verses 6 to 7, He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. The legs of the lame are not equal, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. It is unfit to send a message by a fool. To do so will result in considerable harm to both the sender and the receiver. God gave his law into the stewardship of the prophets, priests, and kings of Israel. He expected them to deliver his message to the people of Israel, and then the people were expected to use the knowledge of God wisely. Proverbs 15 verse 2. A parable is referred to as a dark saying or a riddle that is spoken to hide the meaning to those hearers who lacked the wisdom of God because of their failure to believe his words. To hear a parable spoken by a fool is not only unbecoming, but also practically impossible, just as it is impossible for a lame man to walk evenly. Unsuitable honor. Proverbs 26 verse 8, as he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. A stone is placed in a sling as a projectile to be shot forth. How foolish it would be to bind a stone in a sling, it would serve no practical purpose. It is equally ineffective to give honor to a fool. Unsuitable use. Proverbs 26 verse 9, as a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. Thorns are not useful for any purpose, except to cause harm. A drunkard might be foolish enough to pick up thorns and try to use them for some purpose, but he would only harm himself in doing so. The same can be said of a fool attempting to use a parable. A suitable reward. Proverbs 26 verse 10, the great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors. In scripture, rewards are not just for good, but also for the evil. God will reward a person as is fitting to his deeds. A suitable nature. Proverbs 26 verse 11, as a dog returneth to his vomit, so a fool returneth to his folly. A dog's nature directs him to this disgusting behavior, just as the nature of a fool drives him to continuously return to folly. A dog will not act contrary to his nature, but a fool may hope to be trained or chastised into behaving otherwise. Too often a fool will not be corrected by the rod or by the wisdom of God's words. Proverbs 1 verse 7 and Jeremiah 5 verse 3. A suitable warning. Proverbs 26 verse 12, Sayest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. God spent the first 11 verses of this chapter condemning the fool, and now he records that there is someone far worse. The fool has hope of being made wise by the word of God, but a conceited man is proud and will not hear correction. Psalm 19 verse 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Proverbs 21 verse 11, When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The slothful sluggard. Proverbs 26 verses 13 to 16, The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom, it grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. The sluggard is described as one who is wise in his own conceit. He is a liar because there is no lion in the street. He is only making an excuse not to work. Proverbs 22 verse 13. He is lazy. The number seven in scripture denotes completion, perfection, and fullness. Seven of the wisest men who can come up with reasons for all things cannot convince the sluggard otherwise. Unsuitable behavior. Proverbs 26 verses 17 to 19, He that passeth by and meddleth with strife belonging not to him is like one that taketh a dog by the ears. As a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death, so is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Am not I in sport? 
Meddling with strife was covered in Proverbs chapter 17. In the law of Moses, it was not only unseemly to deceive a neighbor, it was a sin against God. Leviticus 6 verses 1 to 3, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin, and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or hath deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost, and leath concerning it, and sweareth falsely, in any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein. The Contentious Talebearer Proverbs 26 verses 20-22 20 to 22, Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So, where there is no talebearer, the strife saith. As coals are to burning coals, and wood to fire, so is a contentious man to kindle strife. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. A talebearer is a contentious man who speaks lies in order to cause strife and wound the inner man. Satan is the first known talebearer, and those who speak lies are following his example. John 8 verse 44 Ye are of your father the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Unsuitable Deception Proverbs 26 verses 23 to 26 burning lips and a wicked heart are like a potsherd covered with silver dross. He that had it dissembleth with his lips and layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh fair, believe him not, for there are seven abominations in his heart. Whose hatred is covered by deceit, his wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. The talebearer works through deceit. He has a beautiful outward appearance and is known by his fair words. The strange woman of Proverbs chapter 6, which is Satan's religious system personified as a harlot, used her beauty to seduce God's son to worship her instead of God. In Proverbs chapter 7, she used fair speech and flattery in order to deceive God's son. Dissemble means to hide under a false appearance and to make a pretense. Likewise, the Antichrist will appear to be like Christ, but unlike the sinless Savior, the Antichrist will have a heart full of abominations. The number seven is again employed to denote a heart completely full. Refer back to Proverbs chapter six for a description of these seven abominations. Suitable consequences. Proverbs 26 verse 27, whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. A recurring theme found throughout the book of Proverbs and the Holy Bible from Genesis to Revelation is that of a man who sets a trap to kill others and to enrich himself, but instead he gets caught in his own trap. Conclusion This chapter ends with one last warning against ruin brought upon a man by flattery. Proverbs 26 verse 28, A lying tongue hadeth those that are afflicted by it, and a flattering mouth worketh ruin. Summary Proverbs chapter 26 presents tasks, behaviors, and responses that are fitting to different situations. The work of each season of the year is assisted by the suitable weather of that season. Different types of tools are employed in different situations to motivate or chastise stubborn creatures into obedience. Fools, sluggards, and liars receive a fitting punishment for their sins that match the choices they made. God in his wisdom delivered his word to mankind for their benefit, by understanding and obeying his word, men will always know how to speak and behave in a way that is fitting for a son of God. Dispensational Consideration The curse that came upon all mankind was death. It was a fitting judgment for sinful flesh because death demonstrates man's utter inability to overcome his own sin. However, through death, God was able to reconcile man back to himself by sending his son to suffer the punishment for the curse. Jesus Christ was made a curse for sinners, Galatians 3 verse 13, and he hung on a cross to pay the penalty for everyone's sins. He now offers eternal life as a free gift to anyone who will put their trust in his victory over death. Those who reject his free gift will suffer eternal torment, which is a fitting reward. God does not employ physical tools of chastisement upon his sons in this dispensation of grace. 
He uses the sound doctrine of his written word to correct, reprove, and instruct his son. 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. God is looking for believers who have a willing and obedient heart. In order for a believer to be able to discern how to answer a fool, he must not be a sluggard. He must labor in God's word and allow the wisdom of God to be treasured up in his inner man. In this manner, he will be able to discern all things. 1 Corinthians 2 verses 14 to 15. Life Application It is still possible for a believer to be a fool. The Apostle Paul called those Galatians fools who put themselves back under the law to achieve godly perfection. Galatians 3 verses 1 to 3. It is foolish for a man to believe he can be made perfect by keeping the law. Believers should not be wise in their own conceit, but obey the doctrine that was revealed by Jesus Christ to the Apostle Paul in the letters of Romans through Philemon. Believers ought not to be slothful, neither in physical labor nor in spiritual. Physical labor provides for the physical needs of self and others, and spiritual labor in the Word of God provides the needs of the inner man and that of others. Believers should never meddle in affairs that do not concern them. Their goal should be to appease strife, not engender it, by rightly applying the Word of God. As such, believers should never be known as liars and talebearers. Instead, they should labor in the Word of God and speak it constantly. The Apostle Paul warned against preachers and ministers who deceive their congregation with fair speech. Such men will be rewarded as is fitting. Romans 16 verses 17 to 18 Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 15 For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Proverbs 27 verse 6 Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Sufficiency and contentment meet together in Proverbs 27. Proverbs chapter 26, Homework Define, use a Webster's 1828 dictionary to define seemly after first cross-referencing the word in a King James Bible. Seemly is only found two times, Proverbs 26 verse 1 and Proverbs 19 verse 10. Concordance search, find the exact phrase, the curse, using blue letter Bible. It only occurs 19 times. Study these references to discover what the curse is and why the curse comes. Be sure to read Leviticus chapter 26 and Deuteronomy chapter 28. Concordance search, find all forms of the word stubborn and all forms of the word rebel as used together in the King James Bible. Note that when found together, these only refer to the nation of Israel. Study, as time allows, you may like to consider the usage of words thorn and thorns in a King James Bible. It is notable that it is used predominantly in association with the nation of Israel. The Apostle Paul only uses the word one time in his letters, and it is very likely he is referring to the Jewish men who persecuted and followed him attempting to put his converts under the law of Moses. Concordance search, find the words reward and good and reward and evil as used together in a King James Bible. You will find that rewards do not only refer to good things. 2 Samuel 3 verse 39, And I am this day weak, though anointed king, and these men the sons of Zeruiah be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Concordance search, the word conceit is found seven times in a King James Bible, and six of those are associated with the word wise. Read through these verses to get a biblical understanding of the word conceit. Write a list of words that are associated with the word conceit in your notes. Consider, by using Blue Letter Bible and searching for the words seven and full used together, and searching for fulfill and weak as used together, you will see how the number seven is associated with perfection, completeness, and maturity. Concordance search, using Bible Gateway, 
Find the words deceive and neighbor as used together in a King James Bible. Note the spelling of neighbor in the King James Bible is different from our modern English spelling. There are five results, all found in books of the Bible that pertain to Israel. It is helpful to study the context of these words to understand the application to the nation of Israel during the tribulation period. Israel's neighbors will tempt them away from worshiping God and betray them into the hands of their enemies. Consider, the following verses indict Lucifer as the original talebearer. Leviticus 19 verse 16, Job 1 verse 7, Job 2 verse 2, Ezekiel 28 verse 14. Consider, the following verses refer to one who digs a pit or sets a snare in which he catches himself. Psalm 7 verse 15, Psalm 9 verse 16, Psalm 57 verse 6, Ecclesiastes 10 verse 8. Lucifer, in his attempt to kill Adam, the king of the earth, and to take the earth as his own possession, used the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil as his trap. Unbeknownst to Lucifer, God planted the tree as a trap for Lucifer. God, who knew what was in Lucifer's heart, knew that he had already planned to usurp his heavenly government also, Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14. The all-wise God had preemptively planned, before the world began, that his son would come into the world as a man for the suffering of death, to taste death for every man, according to Hebrews 2 verse 9. In order to reconcile both heaven and earth back unto himself, Ephesians 1 verse 10, Philippians 2 verse 10. By tempting Adam to disobey God, Lucifer sprang the trap that would ultimately destroy him. He dug the pit that he would fall into, Isaiah 14 verse 15. Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 14, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Ephesians 1 verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Philippians 2 verse 10 that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Isaiah 14 verse 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit.